Uh, hi, good afternoon everyone. Uh, we have had a great set of uh, talks today and I am really enjoying it and I hope that you are enjoying as well. Uh, today I am going to talk about an, uh, an application framework called React. Uh, uh, this, this framework actually uh, uh, tackles the problem of, of reducing boilerplate from, from, from application code and it does several more things. Uh, we will talk about that and, and before uh, I, I, I talk, talk about what, what Bract is, I'd, I'd like to talk about what is the real problem that we are facing today uh, when, when developing uh, uh, applications with, with Clojure. Uh, I, I currently work with SAP Concur, uh, um, where, where one of my jobs is to make, make uh, using Clojure uh, or more viable in the enterprise. Uh, I have also written a book uh, and, and I, I uh, help organize some of the Bangalore closure meetups. So if you ever happen to, to drop by, you can, you can see me there. Uh, so now on to the problem that we are facing today. Uh, so when we start a project these days, uh, so how do we really do it? Do, do we say lead new app project name and then start uh, configuring the various steps? Um, there are many uh, concerns that we have to deal with, right? Uh, things like how, how do you read the configuration? How do you maintain uh, defaults versus what do you want to override for each environment? How do you set up logging and how do you gracefully exit uh, uh, an application whenever you have to exit? Uh, and then how, how, how do you deal with uh, exceptions that were never caught and, and things like that, right? Uh, and, and there are also more, more things. For example, how, how do you set up a new middleware or some instrumentation or, 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 or different kinds of uh, um, configuration stuff, for example, access control and, and things. That, that you must do before the application runtime begins. Uh, so all of these, these challenges, most, uh, in, in most of the cases, those are handled in a very ad hoc way today. Mm, we just realize that there is a problem uh, and, and we, we straight away start solving those by, by writing code, by, by implicitly calling other functions that, 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 that might do additional parts of that initialization. Um, uh, and in, 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 in effect, what, what happens is that everybody doing those things does, does those, those things a bit differently. And, and as, as a result, uh, so our initialization code is never uh, a first class concern. Uh, the, uh, all, of the, all, all, of, all of the implementations are, are certainly different from, from, from the other. Even the, uh, even, even the same person doing the same thing, uh, after, after six months, it, it, would, it, it would be slightly different. And, and often we see that, that we, we actually uh, copy an old existing project in order to create a new project because we have done some, some of those things earlier and, and those, those, those things get, get copied around, right? Uh, so, uh, so, so what, what results from all of this is that, that the initialization steps are very implicit and those, those, those becomes like pets where, where we remember something and we don't remember something, hence, hence, some of the aspects are, 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 are taken, taken care of well and some of those are not. Uh, the, and then if, if you have multiple projects, let us say that in your team you have about 10 odd projects. This, this approach does not really scale because all of the project initialization uh, evolves in a different way, in, in a different manner. You may have applied some 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 improvement to one project, but but not 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 to the other, uh, and and before you know, there's a lot of changes. There's a lot of drift in in the amount of uh, in, in the amount of inflation that that happens across the projects. Right? If, if you analyze it critically, you will find that that there are few 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 uh, fundamental questions that we can ask uh, ourselves, which are uh, these as as you can see in the slides that do we have at any point of time a state that can tell us 
that how much of the initialization is done and what is the current state, state of, the, of, of the initialization. And what are the exact steps of the initialization? Are, are they declarative enough? Can we, can we see them? Can we inspect them? Uh, and, and can we refactor the whole initialization workflow without involving the functions that, that, that implement each step? Uh, uh, in most cases, the answer is no, because initialization is not a first class concern, and that is the problem that we are dealing with today. Uh, and then beside this, for a, for, for, a, for a good REPL experience, we need the reloaded workflow so that we don't have to leave the REPL and, and we, can, we can be more productive at, at the REPL. And, and a reloaded workflow actually needs all of, and all of all of these, these things, like what is the state of the application and what are the steps? Can I say that, that initialize the, the, the app? And, and can, can, I, can I say that start the app now or stop the app, restart the app? Now, all of all of these things uh, um, requires that we have a very clear control over the exact steps that are happening in, in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the application, right? And then beside these deficiencies, beside these questions that we can ask about these projects and, and initialization, there are certain, certain challenges also today. For example, even if we succeed at, at initializing applications well, uh, the, there's this problem uh, called, called skill gradient problem that we have today, like, like how, 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 how many developers in your team can actually successfully do the whole application uh, application initialization thing. Um, uh, um, so in most of the teams, uh, there are a lot of people who are junior who who do not know yet how to how to to, to do do initialization well. And and in the age of microservices, where we have uh, people owning di different different applications and uh, projects, can we expect uh, expect them to really do all of these things? Which are which are so far away from from the business logic. So that is a, a very real problem, the skill gradient problem. And and the second thing is that even if you know how, how to how to initialize a, uh, an, an an application properly, uh, would you really like to repeat yourself all the time? Uh, by the time you have created your fifth application, you you you're repeating yourself, and then probably probably. You, you, uh, you're copy pasting code or or, uh, or, or doing, doing something that is not first class right and, and beside this uh, one, one, one side effect of doing all of this is that that the human mind can mostly remember about seven things concurrently uh, uh, the, and it, it is much much better for our applications if we deal mostly with the business logic, the business part of the code, instead of, uh, of a constantly, fi uh, constantly fighting the infrastructure part of the code, right? Uh, and, and we may say that, that the libraries actually uh, offer a good solution for, for, for different kinds of problems, but, but libraries actually do the heavy lifting of just a certain thing. Those are not automatically integrated into your application. You need to do, the, do that integration yourself. Uh, you have to do that integration in, in terms of writing code, writing functions, testing them out, and, and do so many things, right? Uh, so, so libraries are automatically not, not a solution for this. Uh, and, and the templates, for example, the project, um, uh, the, the code, code generation templates, those are not a very good solution either because uh, the, the, the templates are not an abstraction. Uh, and by that, I, I mean, that the templates generate your code and then they are completely detached from your code. So, so let us say that, that an application was, was generated using a template and the template had some bug. Now one, once your application has developed quite a bit and, and the template now has a different version, can, can that bug fix come into your project anymore? No, uh, because, because that the template is completely detached from your application after the, uh, the, the generation is done, right? So, uh, so, so think, thinking about, about a solution to this whole mess, there is a, pro 
this is a plausible solution that, that we, we start treating initialization like a first class concern where your applications uh, running is, is, uh, is divided into, into two parts, in, initialization and the runtime part. Where the initialization part prepares your application for the runtime uh, stage, right? And and for uh, and and for, for for doing that, you will need some of the same things that 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 that, that we were questioning ourselves about. Uh, that is that is initialization model, initialization steps, and the sequence in which the whole uh, workflow of of initialization happens, right? Uh, the, and and in, uh, in any application, there are different kinds of entry points. For example, if, if you're running in, in your production, you will be running as, as maybe Java minus jar and, and then the jar file name. Uh, and then that, that goes through your main uh, class that is generated. Whereas during your running tests, you are not running it via main. When, when doing lean ring server headless, you are not going through main. Uh, and, and when starting the REPL, mm, the same case. You, mm, your, your entry point is different. So, so the way that your application gets invoked in, uh, in different environments, those are different. Uh, and, and that means your, 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 your application initialization has to be polymorphic. It, it needs to be aware of how the invocation is being done and, uh, and, and what, what, what exact steps need to be carried out in, in a certain flow. Uh, for example, when, when running your, your application in, in test mode, you may not have to pass the CI arguments. Right, and uh, the, and and uh, the same thing happens for for, for, for deployment. For during, during deployment, you don't need, need to do many things that you may find useful du, du, during during development. And in, and and not only this, you uh, as, as per requirement, there may be different kinds of you know, uh, environments that you may want to set up. For example, you may have one kind of staging or, or three kinds of staging environments. Now, all of, all of them may be uh, um, configured a bit differently. So, how do you tackle all of all of that with a, without without initialization being a first class uh, solution? So, so I, I'd like to introduce a, a framework called Bract. This is this is the, the URL um, bract.github.io. Uh, and, and we have been using, uh, uh, at SAP Concur, we have been using Bract uh, for, for, for over a year to, to build our, um, our, 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 our microservices. We have an internal framework that is, that is built on top of Bract plus some customizations that, that powers all of our microservices. And, and Bract is based on a few concepts. Uh, the first is the initialization state, which is known as context. The context is a map that collects the state that uh, that 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 the that the initialization is in. Um, and there are the initialization steps, which are known as inducers. The inducers are, are plain functions that always receive the context as its first parameter, and and the remaining parameters are are, are, are optional. Uh, and, and inducers may or may not update the context after doing their job. Uh, each, each inducer corresponds with an initialization step. Uh, and there are usually uh, many, many inducers forming the whole initialization chain. Uh, and, and this chain is the workflow, uh, uh, is, is the initialization workflow for your application. And and, the, uh, and and these inducers, they they actually uh, uh, correspond. Uh, they 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 correspond with with certain certain well-known keys uh, within within the context. For example, uh, one one inducer may may produce a key called called, called ring handler, and and other inducer may may apply some some some, some ring ring middleware to that handler. And, and both both actually share the same key, and and, and that is how, how how the correspondence between different inducers happen. Uh, that, that, is, that is that is how how the inducers form 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 a chain by 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 by, by depending uh, uh, and, and sharing uh, 
some of the common keys. And then the example of, 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 of some of these keys are uh, this, as, as you can see on the slide, uh, so the brag.core module has uh, some of these keys, some of these well-known keys where they have different meanings and, and inducers honor those meanings. Uh, and, and the way that you write uh, an, an, an inducer is pretty straightforward. For example, on your screen, this is one of the inducers that we have. That is how to start an application, how, how, to, how to launch the application. Uh, here, uh, um, it, it depends upon certain launchers. Launchers has a, uh, has, has, has a certain key in, in the context. Uh, and, 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 and once once those launcher names are read, those are those are uh, uh, executed, and, and the launchers populate the context back with the, with the stopper functions, so that the application can be stopped after it is started. Uh, so it is with this this kind of correspondence between the inducers that the whole 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 whole, whole initialization flow works, right? Uh, and and BRAC was actually designed with. With, with certain certain philosophies in, in mind about, about the approach. BRAC does not follow convention over configuration. Uh, it, it rather follows uh, um, a configuration excessively, but since uh, specifying configuration at, uh, at, at, uh, at every step would be very tedious, uh, it, it depends upon a lot of the defaults. It's, so, so, so most of the BRAC configuration comes with a lot of defaults that you, that you inherit from, and, and then you can override some of the elements uh, in, in the configuration. Uh, uh, and, and BRAC also makes use of a very powerful uh, uh, configuration library called Keepin that, that has uh, some, some uh, 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 features su such as inheriting uh, a configuration form from different files as well as references to other keys in the same configuration where those are are resolved like variables uh, and and there are ways to, to override certain certain keys in in the whole whole configuration so that so that uh, uh, you can you can ha have have a polymorphic behavior and and when when i say say, say polymorphic behavior this is because the inducers that you specify in the configuration, those can be overridden as well. Uh, so when a child uh, uh, code, when it, when it, when it uh, overrides a certain certain key uh, having having inducers, then the whole whole whole, whole initialization behavior changes, uh, and and that is that is how the polymorphism comes. Uh, and and BRACT is modular. Uh, it, it has different uh, 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 categories of of a functionality. Uh, today we have BRACT core, and we have a CLI module that that handles all the command line command command line arguments, and an, and and a module about ring, and and a module uh, module about, about development where where you can, you can have 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 a, have a completely re reloadable code with with uh, uh, with a, with a uh, reloaded workflow, uh, and 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 one one interesting thing is that the whole application during the runtime of BRAC, it is completely oblivious of the existence of BRAC. That means you should never have to write in your code that that, that require BRAC dot whatever namespace, because because BRAC runs the application. BRAC BRAC has has its has, has the initialization chain that it reads and, and it calls all the different steps and, and then it calls the functions within the app that, that, that are supposed to, to launch the app, right? Uh, and, and just for example, how, 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 how does an, an inducer chain look like? This is the programmatic example of how the context is passed through the, through the different kinds of inducers. You can, you can see, see that the inducers can, can come from various places either from React itself or, fr or from your application to, to form the complete initialization workflow. And, and the same thing expressed as EDN files where you can declaratively specify which inducers are supposed to form the, the initialization chain. And there are also arguments that, can, that you can pass 
from from within the region, uh, and those are passed as as the subsequent parameters to the context. Uh, and um, today we have these modules uh, in, in BRAC, BRAC core, CLI, Dev Ring, and and another framework called Gossamer. I'll, I'll talk about it shortly. And and the modules actually uh, offer certain things like they they. Uh, did they offer the inducer functions, some of the context resources and conflict resources that I'll cover soon, and, and the necessary dependencies. For example, BRAC.CLI depends upon the tools.CLI library, and, and similarly, BRAC.dev depends upon uh, tools.namespace library. Right? And, and with this, I'll, I'll switch to a few demo apps. To, to show how does a BRAC application look like uh, and what are the, the various things involved in, uh, the, uh, in writing applications that, that use BRAC. So I'll have to increase the size of the font. Can you can you all, all see this now? Visible? Okay. Uh, so when 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 developing any any Bract application, um, um, so you can see that that the entry point here, uh, as, as you can see in the project.clj file. Uh, the main entry point is always brac.core.main. That is where the, the, the control reaches. Uh, and in main, uh, it, it runs few internal inducers and then it hands over to the inducers defined inside a file called brac uh, uh, context.edn. So let me show you what, uh, what, what that is. So this is the configuration part that I was talking about. This, this forms some of the context that, that you, you, you define for, for your application. Uh, so if config required is true, then a configuration will definitely be required or else it, uh, it, it would not proceed. Uh, and, and the inducers here, for example, there are two inducers here. One is run context inducers with a reference of CLI inducers and, uh, and dev inducers. Uh, this this thing forms the, the initialization chain for, 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 for this application. The CLI uh, inducers involve passing the arguments, reading the configuration, setting the verbosity, and, and executing the command that was received at, at, at the CLI. This, this is a very, very simple uh, app, uh, and I'll show you how, how it runs. And this. This, this 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 demo app receives uh, as as input uh, 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 y y std in, in any text, uh, and it actually tells you how many words were found in that uh, text. So when you run this, uh, all of those inducers are running, and and finally. Sure, sure. When you do this, when you run this, it, it tells you the word count is three and the stop word count is one. So, so the stop word word count is something uh, that, that 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 involves the stop words like um, uh, the uh, and, and the different kinds of kinds of kinds of prepositions. Uh, 
so, so, so to do this, it, it has passed the, the, the command line, line arguments and, and then it, it, it has called, called the, 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 the necessary functions to, to actually do the job. And if, if we go back to the config, we can see that, that there is an, 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 an inducer called brack.cli.inducer uh, and, and it does uh, uh, execute command. And, and the, there's a configuration that you can see uh, at, at the last line called brack.core slash launchers. That is the command that, that actually launches the application. Uh, uh, and and this, this, this command um, corresponds to the code uh, in, inside this repository that is demo word count init slash start. Uh, and if we try to see that, So this, this, this is that, that function, print word count, that, that sort of uh, uh, um, pr 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 prints the, the, word, the word word count finally. But what this thing says say demo dot, dot, dot word count dot init slash start, right? So, so this, this is not the right file. Uh, this is word count dot init where we have specified this thing called start. So, so the start is also an inducer here that, that it receives the context and it changes and, and, and it returns the context unchanged. Uh, so you, you, you do that printing of the word count in, in the middle of that, right? Uh, the, uh, the, and, and beside this, I can also show you how, how the testing happens. So um, clean to clean test. So when you run the tests, your, your application initializes using the same principles that we found in, in the config in, in the inducer chain. So your, so your application gets, gets initialized in, in the same way and then the tests are run. Hence, your tests find the application to be initialized before, before they, can, they can run. Uh, and, And, and in, in the same way, when you say lean, do, clean, repel, uh, I'm sorry, I cannot, cannot move that uh, thing up because that stands on the last row. Um, let me see if I can actually do it. Yeah, this fine now? Yeah. Uh, you can do the same thing as start, uh, as, as in reload, the, 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 the reloaded workflow. And now it is actually waiting at the STD IN for the input. So if I say hello world and do a control D, it, it will tell me the word count now, right? Uh, and, and in the same way, I, I can say restart. So so, so, so what it will do is that it will stop and restart the, the whole, whole code. So it will do a stop and then restart and, and then waiting again at the study again. And it gave me the output. Um, uh, and, and looking at another uh, uh, demo app that is that is a small web app that always gives you some 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 sort of roll of dice uh, and and for running that so it started a certificate on port 3000 and I, I can simply try to see local. No, I gave it at the wrong point. Um, so, 
so so it, so it gave, gave me a roll of dice that is 5 next time it is 4 and and so on so so it picks up one randomly not not in a decrementing order <laughs> right yeah yeah something other that uh, Uh, and in the same way, the tests and then the REPL works 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 the same way. And and I'd, I'd like to to show you how how is how how is how is it configured differently compared to the word counter. So the dependencies are the same drag dot CLI and, and drag dot ring because we are making making use of these two two features uh, and it uses HTTP kit so HTTP kit dependencies there and and then beside that there's a, a plugin called, called lean ring that it uses for for easy development environment uh, where we, we will specify drag dot ring uh, modules uh, functions to to act. As, as the ring handler and uh, and to, to 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 trigger initialization because this initial this 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 initialization is 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 supposed to happen in in development mode not in production mode hence it it does the initialization a little differently uh, avoiding some of the steps that uh, that would be required in in, in the production build for uh, for example parsing CLI arguments that that cannot happen. During during ring ring development, so uh, um, due to that, uh, mm, uh, we can say lean ring server headless uh, and it'll start up in in the same way, but but uh, uh, mm, with with a little little different initialization, right? And, and looking at the configuration that it requires, so inside the resources folder, there is this file called brag dot uh, brag, brag context. It it it, uh, it 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 inherits certain uh, uh, configuration from from this file called brac slash ring slash context. Hence, on line number four, if you see, um, there's a key called parent dot file names, and that key is what causes the, uh, this 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 config file to be merged onto some 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 base or parent config, and those are loaded from from the files um, specified there. And here the user chain is a bit long, where you you uh, call call some some more sub list of inducers. For example, on on line number seven, when it says run context inducers with reference to app slash slash CLI inducers, it, uh, it it goes to line number eighteen, where where we have we have some more uh, uh, inducers mentioned. Uh, so first, it, it invokes the CLI inducers in, in production mode, not 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 in dev mode. Uh, uh, will 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 come come to the dev mode, uh, and and then it, it calls the app init function inside the application, uh, which, which which returns the ring handler, and and then upon the ring handler, um, some of the 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 the, the, the ring ring uh, uh, middleware are, are applied. And and then then the whole whole chain completes with with various uh, on configuration. Uh, here you you you, you, um, you can you can see that 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 the dev dev inducers list is empty, whereas the CLI uh, um, the, uh, the inducers list list is, is full. But if we look at another file in in development mode, which is inside the test folder. Here we can see that 
that that that, that this is this is inheriting from from the black context config file that we were looking at, but but the CLI inducers and uh, and, and the dev inducers have, have been redefined, uh, and that is how the, the behavior changes in a development mode where where we, uh, we have a partially different kind of kind of kind of initialization behavior now. So the so the CLI in, uh, inducers only reads the config, and and the dev dev dev, dev, dev inducers also records the whole context after the initialization is done, so that the tests when they run, they can they can find the the, the whole whole context populated and and placed into a web. Because mutation is okay in development, right? Uh, well, uh, so uh, so. So 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 this is this is how 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 these these applications are are are, are, are configured, and and one, one one more thing that I wanted to show is, uh, excuse me, that there is also a way to find out what all steps are being invoked. So if you start this in verbose mode, it it starts telling you what what all. Uh, um, um, steps are being executed you run this and it tells you all all the steps uh, all all the inducers that are that are, that are being being invoked and 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 and, and, and how, how how much how much time they are taking so that if if it starts a little slow then then you you know know, know which which part to actually tune right uh, and and when when you stop this uh, so when you do control C, okay. So it has. Excuse me, and I'll try this again just to show one small little thing. So you do control C. Oh, so it exits again. I'll show that some other time. And okay. So coming back to the to the to the slide. This is this is by the way. The, the flower uh, uh, on bougainvillea, which is not really a flower. The red thing that you see is a bract. This, this, this is an example of a bract. This, this is a botanical term. Uh, so we, we spoke about the entry points where the regular CLI entry point in, a, in an Uber jar uh, is in project.clj, where, spe where, where we specify the main as bract.co.main namespace from where every, uh, everything starts. For for the for the for 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 running the application in a regular mode, uh, uh, and then the tests they actually require a certain namespace called brag.co.dev, which which start the application uh, in a development mode, and and it it has certain certain defaults that can be overridden. Uh, and, and similarly, the REPL, when, when you start, that also starts in the dev mode. And, and the linear plugins, like lean ring that we saw, that also uh, configures project.clj in a way so that they, they receive the control and then they hook into the development mode of, of the application, right? And, and now we saw that we have so far used the CLI and, and the ring uh, modules. But 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 how how do modules really work? Um, uh, we had to manually integrate by by specifying the inducer names in those config files, right? Uh, and uh, and and how how are modules really supposed to 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 integrate? Uh, so the difference between the modules and the libraries is the integration. Uh, if if uh, um, uh, so, so, so normally uh, a library cannot cannot be integrated without any assistance from the programmer, and there are no hooks through which they, they can be integrated into into any, any app or or any any framework. Uh, whereas the modules are actually designed to be to 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 to, to either either act as plugins or they can be configured to be integrated into, into the app. The, the example that we saw with the Brack demo apps. Those are using uh, using using configuration, where you you, you configure the, the the inducer names uh, into your config files so that they're they're uh, they're invoked at, at the right 
place and time. Uh, and, and there are another kind of uh, 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 frameworks that, that expose hooks where the plugins can go and attach themselves to those um, slots, empty, empty slots where they are called back whenever the time is right. Um, Bract is clearly the configuration kind of framework, so it does not use plugins as plugins, uh, leveraging hooks. Uh, because in, in Bract, the, the, the initialization steps act as the glue, and since they are declarative and those can be specified by ID and files, those, those act as the glue. Uh, and, and of course, uh, as, as you also saw that writing these config uh, files, uh, uh, the, 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 the context files, those, those involve you to write a lot of uh, steps, a lot of, lot of initialization steps. And sometimes that can be really painful because in a complex app, you may have a lot of steps to be done and, and that will that'll be, be like a hundred line, uh, uh, configuration uh, and, and that is that is quite quite cumbersome of, uh, in in many cases so so bract modules that we have that 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 we we see uh, uh, here uh, on cli ring or or dev those, those those are sort of sort of low level modules not not really ready to eat easily right they, they they provide the mechanism, but the but the experience is uh, is is not not that smooth. So 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 almost uh, uh, so in most of the cases you you, uh, you will need some some overarching framework that that that, that makes use of these modules um, for 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 the for the experience to be smooth, uh, and and that is that is why there is another framework. Uh, uh, in in, uh, in Bract, which, which is more more integrated than, than others, and that is called Gossamer. Um, uh, Gossamer combines web routing, logging, uh, uh, and, and some instrumentation and, and graceful shutdown and, and different things. By, by default, and, and you can of course customize many of these things, in fact completely replace its initialization chain, but, but it, it gives you kind of slots where you, you can even plug your own own things and, and the whole thing will still work. Uh, and, and this is, this is to, 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 to sort of, sort of give, give, give you a, a better, better experience. Uh, and, uh, and in Gossamer, let us say that there was a bug in some version and you are using that that version uh, in your app, uh, and if the next version of Gossamer fixes that, then then then, then your your app will automatic, automatically get that bug fix if you simply bump the version number of Gossamer, right? Um, that is that is the kind of benefit that, that you get with Gossamer because the whole inducer chain is something that you inherit from from Gossamer, and you you only pro, uh, provide certain 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 small things. Uh, so this is some of the details about, about Gossamer. Gossamer is opinionated um, as opposed to the Bract modules which are pretty low level and those are not opinionated. And uh, it, it includes certain things by default and the initialization steps are included in, in Gossamer and those can be individually overrided uh, or, or, or overridden. Uh, and uh, and a few more notes are that Gossamer is a micro web framework and it may have some modules in future but right now this is, this is just, 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 just small, one, one small framework. And with that and I'll come to a demo of the Gossamer app. This is the, uh, the, the famous to-do MVC app uh, implemented using Clojure and Clojure Script.
Yeah, so, so it started and if, if you could go to the browser, you can see the application. Oops. Where is the application? And so on. So it work, 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 works works the same way, way that it works uh, uh, in in the regular uh, places. And can hardly see the content. Um, yeah. So this, this this is running in jar mode, so so it, it will not have a lot of logs, I guess. <laughs> but but I, I can show you some something something else. Meanwhile, uh, this this integrated with a lot of things. Uh, for example. Oh. oh, so, okay, I will show this to you on, on the command line. Uh, so, so you uh, did, did there a lot of, lot of things integrated into the app, for example, did, did, an, an, in, uh, did, did there is a slash info route Add it by default so that you're, you're going to get 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 some some info uh, about the instance. You're going to disable a lot of things uh, and and uh, and and coming coming to its configuration. This is like not not too uh, big. Uh, so if you see this, I'm sorry, no, not not this. This is black context. Yeah. So unlike the dice roll app, here here the config is pretty small because we are inheriting a lot of the, the config from 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 the from the, from the gossamer config. Um, here on, on line number one, we can see that gossamer core web web app context dot that that is that is giving giving a lot of the resource chain things and and some of the things that we we have overridden are are things like, like the line number four where it says init inducers are, are so and so, it, it uses a database. So it initializes the database and, and certain things and, and then it returns the routes which are, which are compiled into, into a ring handler and then that thing runs. So, uh, uh, so, that is in fact pretty much that I have for, for showing. Uh, I'll be around for 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 for, for questions and and any any uh, kind of you know, you know, queries that that you may have, uh, or if we have time now, we can probably take some questions. Yeah, I think we can take one or two questions. Uh, does anybody have any question? So uh, briefly, um, can you repeat uh, what an inducer is? So it's um, a function or a piece of code that you run at initialization time. Uh, that's what I understood. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, uh, so if I understand the question correctly, so the question is, what are inducers? Can I can I briefly uh, um, summarize that? So 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 an inducer is. This is exactly one initialization step among many steps. So the entire se sequence of steps becomes a chain of initialization and, and out of that, an inducer co 
constitutes one step uh, and that can break down into uh, many other steps but but that individually in, in that list that that there is a, a single step uh, and, and an inducer is a function that always receives the context that is that is the, the application initialization model as its first argument and, and the remaining arguments can be specified in, in the idiom file and, and the same arguments will be passed to that inducer uh, if, if it matches arity. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you.